Yo, what's good, family? It's your boy Demon up in the building. We talk Hawks TV. We talk Hawks daily here with Langston up in the building. But we out here in Cancun, man, chilling. But guess what? We about to talk to these Hawks real quick, man. You feel me? So, Langston, so tell me, give me your quick, sum up the season for the Hawks. Yeah. In your words, some of the season off for you. Man, I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I expected a lot more to come out of this season. Mm -hmm. You know, it looked like we were primed to go with DeJounte Murray in the, as, as the combo one-two guard. I was full, too, bro. I thought we were going to get – I thought it was going to be the difference maker this season, man. Mm -hmm. I really did. And um, I think what I'm most – um, disappointed in. Sorry, I just got a massage, y'all. It's off the hook. It's hey, crazy. he just got a massage, and I've been drinking, so don't even. So disregard if we say if words are slurred or whatever. All right, man. So I think what disappointed me the most about the season, man, is not is not that we wound up damn near in the same spot we were in last season, mm -hmm. which is at the bottom. You know, trying to play, trying to play in, but. Um, the inefficiency of Trey Young kind of took me back a little bit, man. Okay. You know, and, I, yeah. and I'm, I'm a Trey Young lover. I love Trey Young, man. I think mm -hmm. he's a one of one kind of talent. You know, I don't, um, you know, Hawks moving forward. I mean, looking at what Trey Young has done, his career in college and um, was incredible. Mm -hmm. He was not super efficient in college, but he, you know, he led the NCAA in points and assists. We all know that. But um, and I thought the tra trajectory he was on with the Hawks was going to be a difference maker alongside in conjunction with Dejounte Murray. Right. And we're going to do something. Um, the inefficiency kind of disappointed me, though, man. And if you look at what happened um, in the regular season versus the postseason, mm -hmm. he, he became less efficient in the postseason. And I don't know what was up with that. Like, well, what do you what do you think about the uh, the acquisition, the firing of Nate McMillan, and then the acquisition of uh, coach uh, Quinn Snyder, do you think it's a two part question? Do you think that um, the Hawks should have waited to the end of the season to switch the head coach, or do you think Fire Nate McMillan when we did, I think around the end of February, um, and bringing in Quinn Snyder, do you think that was a good move? We should have waited, man. I honestly, I don't, there's there's two. There's two ways of thinking about that. Mm -hmm. One is give Quinn Schneider the ball, let him see what kind of roster he has. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't going to change the team at this point in the season. I mean, right. I know, I know, because we, we basically played 500 ball when he took the reins anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't. Um, I, I think they could have waited only because now we're seeing how many more coaches are have been let go. Right. And so there's a bigger pool of eligible coaches that, that, that could have more than competently handled the job of coaching the Hawks. But it's also a bigger pool of uh, teams that's in better position than we are. Yeah. So Facts. Do you think it was a smart move to hop on him early? Because, I mean, he could have ended up going, yeah, Philly, job was available. Yeah. Um, who else got, got fired? The Raptors' job was available. Money is gone. Uh, the Suns' job available. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I could uh, see Bud is gone. Yeah, Bud's gone. So I mean, he could have went to the Bucks, which is basically you already got a major franchise player That's in Giannis. Uh, could have went to the Suns, where you got Booker and KD yeah. and Aiden. Um, so. I mean, I'm not shocked that the Hawks um, went after Quinn Snyder because, like, I, I believe in the reports that Nate McMillan went in there and actually resigned in right. January. Sure. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Um, that wasn't working out too well. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, okay. So, so you're we, saying, yeah. So you're saying it was good to pick up Quinn when we did because he was available, and we were we needed we needed and we were going to go in a different direction, coaching wise. And it was good to pick up somebody with his. Well, his, I would have personally. I'm not. I wasn't a big Quinn Snyder fan. Mm -hmm. As far as hey, when we fire Nate McMillan, we're going to go get Quinn Snyder. He's the guy. Right. Go get him. I'm to. I was just saying, I believe that Nate McMillan, maybe his words was falling on deaf ears. Maybe they tuned him out. I did believe we needed a coaching change because um, somebody got to help us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, 
granted, we got a Quinn Snyder. He probably would have been the hottest coaching candidate out there at the time. Sure, at that time. Yeah, so, I mean, I could see why they did it and made the move. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm just hoping that I'm going to put this on the record, man. Go ahead, put it on I the record. I don't think Nate McMillan – I didn't put all that blame on Nate McMillan for how the team was doing. I didn't – that wasn't me yelling that Nate needs to go. It's all Nate's fault. I thought the players just weren't – they just weren't able to make shots, man. I mean – And the, the, the defender. The, the, they couldn't defend. They couldn't make shots. I mean, how are you going to – you can't be successful like that. And – you know, I understand there's personality issues. I played mm-hmm. a little hoop in high school, not not much. Don't look up my record because I sucked. But <laughs> hey, I didn't play no high school ball, so hey, you did better than me. <laughs> but you know, I played a little intramural hoop, and I know how you can have some you know chemistry issues on the mm-hmm. team, and that can affect maybe people how they go out and play and what kind of effort they give. But you right, man. These, these guys are making a lot of money, and there's really no excuse for not being professionals when you're making that kind of cash. So what do you think about? So do you consider? Do you consider? The DeJounte Murray trade, after what you saw this season, 41-41, yep. even though we won 43 games last year without DeJounte Murray, but we still had other people like uh, Gallo and whatnot. Yeah, Gallo. Do you, right now, just after this one, one season, one season mm-hmm. from 1 to 10, rank that DeJounte Murray trade? Oh, man, I'm going to give that a 7. Okay. I'm gonna give it Talk a seven. Me. Why you give it a seven? Because um, because I think Matt likes to call him a, a dim star. star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you're wrong for that, man. Because let me tell you what that dim that dim star was more efficient in the play in the postseason than Trey was. And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm not I'm not you know Trey Young. He's obviously um, our mega star, our talent, our you know our guy who's. Um, you know, he's. I think he's the future of Atlanta. He's a he's a unique player, man. No mm-hmm. question about it. Facts. Um, you know, I always measure the little guy. Allen Iverson was one of my favorite players. Okay. You know, so I always measure the six foot six one and under guys to Allen Iverson. How mm-hmm. well? And Trey is kind of right there, man. In terms of not only, um, you know, I don't think AI ever averaged. 30 and 10, you know, or 29 and 10. He yeah, averaged, yeah. he would average 33 a couple of them seasons, but he, yeah, AI definitely didn't pass the ball. He didn't pass that. Trey, much, I man. give Trey credit. Trey has a beat in the playmaking department. Yeah. Vision. Um, obviously, I would favor AI as far as scoring because he can score from everywhere he on the court. Kill anybody all the time. Any, yeah. Anybody could get it. Yeah. And they put yeah. him around. You know, we need to do what those Sixers did. I keep saying this in the chat. Mm-hmm. We got to surround. Um, Trey with big players, man. We can't be undersized in any other position if Trey Young is going to be our, our main guy. Okay, so what's your thoughts about moving so, off of... Uh, so, to J- John Tay, real quick, I'm giving ahead. that a seven. Okay. Because I saw what he was able to do at times during the season. Mm-hmm. It's the first season in, you know, let them guys meld a little bit better. That's a lot of that's a lot of that's a lot of tension mm-hmm. going on in the locker room when you're making a coaching shift three quarters away into the season. Right. So, even you know, though which is crazy because Nate McMillan' overall record with the Hawks is he's like 20 games above 500. I know. And you know. took us to the conference finals, which is crazy that. Well, you can't keep a job after doing that. That's why. That's why. <laughs> Dude, Bud that's got why. fired. <laughs> yeah, he was just what a year, yeah. two years off a championship. And they fired him. And did you know Bud's brother had died? Oh, during the playoffs. So I was I was telling Matt that I was like, Bud better than me because I wouldn't even went out there and coach. Yeah. I would have had my assistant too. You they know, they fired him. They fired him in the postseason where his brother died. Yep, his brother died. Yep, that's mm-hmm. fucked up. Yeah, man. it is, man. So what you give me your quick thoughts about? Um, that's really fucked up. That's like that Nate Robinson stuff, man. He let him go off of his contract right and his sister passed away. Yeah. You know, well, they did Isaiah Thomas like that, too. That's what I mean. I, I yeah. Thomas, yeah. And he messed up his hip trying to play them extra games in the playoff for the Celtics. That's crazy, man. And then his sister died that same year, and then they cut him. Well, they didn't cut him. They traded him. Traded him for, uh, I mean. Some they, cigarettes. And well, no, nah, they actually. He was, part, nah, he was part of the trade for, if I, if I remember correctly. He was part of the trade for Kyrie. Oh, oh that's how oh, Boston right. got you're Kyrie. Right. Yeah, you're if right. I remember correctly. You are correct. Yes, so, sir. give me your thoughts on. Um, okay. So seven. Van- Dejounte Murray, I give it a seven. Okay. What, Next year, let's come back and let's see if y'all can get that together. What about? What's your thoughts on this? One of the biggest hot topics out there. Are you pro or anti 
John Collins? Do you want to trade him or do you think we need to keep him? And let, I'll tell you my quick thoughts. Yeah, um, I'm for John. I prefer to trade Capella. Yeah. And let uh, Congo start, with, but we use John as the pick and roll like we did when he averaged 20 and 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He and I think he's a dynamic. Um, I don't like him just being a stretch four. Um, but I don't see us getting off Capella. I, I'm going to keep it real. Only thing I see the Hawks doing this offseason, trading, I don't know who they're going to trade, but just to get below the salary cap. Because you know Tony Russell has never paid the salary cap since he owned the Hawks. Man, it's going to get worse now with that apron and all this new the yeah, terms of the yeah. deal. It's going to be even more. It's People gonna be not worse. Feeling, yeah. Well, it's going to end the era of like a team like the Warriors. Because yeah. they had one, two, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, D'Lo, uh, uh, Draymond all on like max money. <laughs> it's crazy. And they just gave Jordan Poole what? Four years. 145, 120, 128, something like that. Yeah, like, so. Yeah, that's a 500 million, that's a half a billion dollar payroll next yeah, so, year. I mean, you can still do it, yeah. but the penalties is severe. But what's your thoughts on the Hawks? Are you pro keeping John or trading John? Man. And if whatever which one, why? Man. I, I, Man, this is a tough one. This is this one splits the city in half, and y'all know this. But, yeah, it does, man. Um, I would say my opinion on John Collins is I like his energy. This is me just talking as a person who watched all the home, all the games. I got the league pass. I watch all the games. Right. And then most of the time when I'm not working, I get on the I get on the comment system, chime in, whatever. Mm -hmm. I throw shot, shoot my arrows from from, <laughs> from the gallery, from the gallery. But you know, I, I respect all y'all to do that. Man. Get on there and do it. But shout out to everybody in the chat too, man. The chat and everybody on the panel. Yes, sir. Shout out. I I, I like John Collins' energy. I just don't know if he has this. I I just I I need to. I don't know if he has the skill set to be in the toughness and the in the meanness to him that it that it requires to play that position. Like you you gotta have a certain level of meanness to, mm -hmm. to play for the Hawks. Sort of like when uh Pop said he wanted some nasty. You gotta have some nasty man. Yeah. Like every team gotta have a nasty and normally that nasty plays a position that John Collins is playing. Power forward. Power forward. So you you know don't be helping no other teammate off no other eyes on the opposite team off the court man don't be dapping people up you know before the game you know Trey Young you know get up you know smiling at the refs and you know Kiki and all that nah man you gotta have a you need a uh, you know I, um, you know when I was in law school I, I used to be a ball boy for the Golden State Warriors okay um, and um, we had a Donald Foyle, we had Eric Dampier, and, you know, there were some guys like that who played for the Warriors, and I'm not a Warriors fan, I'm a Hawks fan lifelong, but I saw, man, they had some, they had some dogs on that team, you know, yeah. Gilbert Arenas' team, that's Jonathan Jameson, yeah. um, Troy Murphy, you know, um, Mike Dunleavy, um, but they had a couple of guys on that team who were the dogs at the four position, and you kind of need that, you know. John is real finesse kind of dude, you right? Know? Mm -hmm. But I like the finesse. I like his skill set. I just think he needs to be he needs to he needs to be a little more mean about it. And you know, yeah, the dunk on Embiid that made it onto the shirt. I love it. I got that shirt. I love that shirt. Yeah. But that's got to be your your mo, man. You can't just do it and sell it on a shirt and be like, this is who I am. Need you you got to show it every game. Yeah, that I'm this dude. Yeah, need to be known for that nasty. You gotta be, to be known. known. Yeah. It's just like it's just like you when you can't be like, man. Don't worry about being like. Just get, just, just kill, just kill people at the floor. It's just like when Dominique always says, like, especially with Clint Capella, dunk the basketball, because then players will know, and they'll respect that, so they won't even try to contest you, because they know you finna yam it up there and not do a finesse layup. You feel me? So John needs to be more aggressive. Kind of had that mean streak. He needs a mean streak. Right? I like be, him. Be friendly after the game. You can shake the hand after the game. Mm -hmm. Play a fall down. Lay their ass down there. Am I right? You're right, man. Look at Udonis Haslam. Look at that dude. That dude still played for the Miami Heat. 20 years. And you know what? He's an enforcer in the locker room. He'll crack the young dudes on the head if they start like, getting, you know, getting slippery. 
and man, you know what he did when he played? He was he was there to enforce. And you know John Collins is the longest tenured Hawk right now on the roster. So, you know, he kind of like the elder statesman. So Act like it, man. Act like it, you can stay, you know? So before we wrap it up, <laughs> let me get your thoughts on what's your hope for the Hawks this upcoming season? Now, granted, it's going it's to be some trades made. Obviously, we don't know it. What we don't know what's going to happen, but with the roster right now, mm -hmm. with the new coach, so let's think about the Hawks right now with the new coach, Coach Quinn, who has taken Utah to a number one seed. Yep. He has had the Utah Jazz top five in both defensive and offensive efficiency, so we know he can do it. Now, obviously, we don't have a Gobert, a young Gobert, We've got a Capella. I mean, so what is your thoughts on the future of the Atlanta Hawks right now as you see it with the current roster, with a whole offseason under Coach Quinn, and Coach Quinn giving time to instill his offensive philosophies and strategies? My hope is that everybody, all of our development players mm -hmm. will mature under this new coach. So we're talking, you're talking AJ Griffin, JJ. JJ. A, a double O. Double O. Still double, double O is great, man. You I, think I double O started? Double o. You think double yeah, O started? I do, I do. If you, look, if you look at his numbers next to Capella's, they're right next to each other. They're yep. right next to each other. Um, and I found out that Clint Capella gives up more points in the paint than double O when he's on the court. I didn't know that. I found that out like a couple weeks ago. So so that's that tells me that O, o is a starter. Okay. Um, and he can do something Capella cannot do, which is shoot a three-point shot. If, shoot any shot. He can shoot any <laughs> that's shot. Not a, uh, I know. How's uh, Capella layup. not had a... How, I mean, you bring this up all the time. How has he not done something with his game to get better at... It? How does he have no moves, man? Zero. How does he... How does he I mean, he's a rebounder. He's a rebound sophisticate. Like, he's great at that. But, but you got to be more than that if you're going to be on the Hawks because we can't just be playing four on one. And if Trey's having an off night, damn, it's, it's, it's three on five, you know, sometimes. The, sa the, know? Same, the same offense he had in Houston yeah. is the same offense he has with us right now. Has added nothing. Not a 15-footer. I think I've seen him throw that little ugly sky hook a couple times. <laughs> but nothing to be effective. You feel me? So yeah. So Hawks, let's put dub. Let's give Double O some starting minutes. Let's give AJ some more time. I think we need to get Bogey some more time too because he was the most efficient player we had in the playoffs. He stepped up. Dejounte mm -hmm. Murray, um, his numbers. He was played better in the playoffs. Trey Young got to just. He just has to. He just. I know we keep saying grow up, but I'm hoping that in this off season, Trey's going to ass fully assimilate. Um, Quinn's philosophy on offense, his his, you know, you know that Duke-minded tough tough defense, and and just and lead this team, man. I, we got to have Trey. Trey has to lead this team, and everybody got to be on board with it, man. But I really want to see Owen the start lineup. I wanna okay. See, I want to see Owen start lineup, and I want to see um, I want to see us get bigger at at, at a. <laughs> We got to get bigger. We got to get me, bigger. What's your thoughts on Hunter? Um, he actually played decent in the playoffs. His numbers mm -hmm. improved, and that was that's a good sign. Um, the injury-prone, you know, sort of fears I had about him early on is mm -hmm. he seemed to have. I mean, what do you, I mean? He seems like he kind of beat that rap a little bit this season. He had less injuries this season, so mm -hmm. maybe he is more durable than I thought he was. Um, if so, I like him, man. But again, I, you know, I don't want to, um, you know, man. I'm like you, man. De you know, development. I don't want to hear about. I, I want to see wins, man. I want. Exactly. I'm ready to. My, you know, my dad has been a Hawks fan since the beginning. I'm from Atlanta. I moved to LA when I was 12. But my Atlanta sport. But all my family's still back in Atlanta and, and and Philly and whatever. But I've. I'm a Hawks fan. I'm a Bulldogs fan. I'm a Falcons fan. I'm a, I'm a Braves fan. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See how I'm repping out here in Cancun. We don't care. But the Hawks have to win before my father passes away, man. Like, my dad has been a diehard fan. They got to win. They got to do it one time. My dad has to experience the taste of victory. Mm -hmm. Just do it, for, do it for pop, man. You know, I'm going to be around a while, but 
I want to see wins. I don't care. I just want to see. I want to see us winning games. I want to see us not being. Oh, maybe they're gonna do all right in the playoffs. Maybe you know, no more laughing stock stuff, man. We don't. Yeah. We, we got the power to be more than. Um, a maybe they'll make it team. We got the power to be that team that people are fearing. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Jalen Brown gives us a look. Maybe Jalen Brown works on his handle in the offseason. I don't know. But let's get some wins, man. Let's just rack up some wins. And don't be losing to Houston and the Spurs in the regular season to mess up your playoff season. Those are games that had significance and you didn't even know it at the time. You know? Them little losses they talked to San, in San Antonio and Houston. Those games had meaning down the road. Well, you know, I was at the San Antonio game. <laughs> That's right. That's I was crazy. there, sitting right behind the bench, watch, sitting right behind the bench, watching them trick off a 18 point lead, excuse me, a 24, 24 point, point lead, lead in the second half against a team that won 18 games that ended up getting a number one draft pick. And that's what I tell people when people come up here and try to tell me we need to do all this fix the defense. Because if you look at the game we tricked off against the Spurs, uh, the Houston Rockets, all those teams, uh, Charlotte Hornets, Charlotte when they Hornets. didn't, when they didn't, they didn't even have Rozier or Melo Ball one game, and we still lost. Listen, we started that game. If we improve the defense by 10, 10 positions from twenty fifth, I guarantee you we're a fifty win team. We already got the offense. We just don't have the defense, and we don't need to be making massive moves to get better. Yeah, that's my thought process. You know, we not. Listen, we Lifetime Hawks fans, we not getting no free agents. Let's keep it real. Not in a prime. No one want to come here. So we got to focus on what we have now. Development of Jalen Johnson, AJ, and Double O, and improving the defense under Quinn Snyder. We will be a 50-win team if he can get if he can get that defense dialed in. You feel me? Any last words, Langston? No, man. I just want to say thanks to everybody who follows um, We Talk Hawks. It's my favorite YouTube channel. Um, y'all see me slinging arrows from the gallery, but I, I have mad respect and love for everybody on the channel who, you know, got the heart to get up on the screen and share their thoughts and opinions about this team. I think everybody can have something to contribute to value. Man, mad props to, to DeMond. Just lucky and grateful that I met this brother out here, man. Random chance meeting, but yes, sir. Yes, that's, sir. That's cra- hey, that's crazy, man, running into, just running into Hawks fans in general. Uh, this is the second Hawks fan I ran into. I ran into another one at the bar last night. Oh! Um, they don't. Fo- well, he he followed the cha- channel now. He went and subscribed last night at the bar. <laughs> but being able to run it, run into Langston right here, being able to talk. Cause remember, guys, you know, it's hard to talk Hawks basketball with other Hawks fans. Cause where we at? You know what I'm saying? So when we get this chance to run into this brother right here, man, like blew my mind. Like why? You know what I'm saying? A couple years ago, bro, who you gonna talk Hawks basketball with? You know what I'm saying? And, you, and I owe a little bit, I owe a lot of that to Trey Young because he really put the Hawks on the map. And I said that before, when I go to these games in San Antonio, I would never see Hawks jerseys. You see like, you can count them on one hand. Now it's tons of them. So the brand of the Atlanta Hawks is spreading, but we still ain't getting the wins. And like Langston said, we about, we about wins and losses over here. Wins and losses. Any shout outs you want to give Langston? Cause my wife, I'm doing my wife. I'm a shout out to my, I'm a shout out to my boy Armand, my boy Bobby, representing College Park, Georgia. What's up, fellas? Yes, sir. And we up out of here, man. So hey, we pop up anywhere, dog. And if y'all ever see me out in public, man, holla at me. And that's what, like my guy Langston right here. We do an interview on the spot. We'll talk off basketball on the spot. You feel me? So. We up out of here live, but this is the first, the first <laughs> We Talk Hawks TV from Cancun, baby. Cancun. We Cancun. Hey, we'll probably see some Hawks players out here since we ain't in the playoffs. Yeah. So. <laughs> we out here with the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we out of here. We're going to holler at y'all, man. Y'all stay up, man. Hawks up, man. Hawks up. Peace. Peace.